So today I want to talk just a little bit about the core i5s from Intel. And no, I'm not talking about the more recent i5s that are actually really powerful and strong and just all around really solid gaming CPUs. I'm talking about the older core i5s, those of the 7000 in previous era where they had four cores and four threads. You had no hyper threading. It was just the four cores that you got and that was it. Those of course were a product of the pre AMD Ryzen era when AMD really had nothing competitive on the market whatsoever. So Intel sort of just sat on itself and just went with quad cores for i5s for generation after generation because AMD was not challenging Intel in any way and there was no pressure to actually do anything innovative with that lineup of CPUs. And to be fair, it was really the entire mainstream lineup that Intel just sort of sat on with the same basic core counts and thread counts that consumers were getting generation after generation. You had i3s that were dual cores and hyper threaded, so you had four threads. You had i5s that were quad cores but no hyper threading. And then you had the i7s which were four cores and eight threads because they did have hyper threading. And for a long time, there was this sentiment among gamers that the i5 was all you really needed. And to be fair, in that era, games were often developed with the mindset that most people were running basically i5s or at most they had i7s with eight threads to work with. So games were not really even pressured by the technology available to the mainstream gamer to actually develop games that took advantage of high core counts and high thread counts. That of course started to change when AMD did release Ryzen and even though first generation Ryzen in the IPC category wasn't really yet competing blow for blow with Intel, it was at least enough pressure to start getting Intel to move towards higher core and thread counts. But today we're going to take a look back at those quad core i5s to see if four cores and four threads on Intel's uh, six thousand series this would be Skylake the OG 14 nanometer uh, we're gonna see whether that's still enough for gamers here in 2021 or if you're still rocking one of those older i5s is it time to finally update give up the ghost and move on to something with more cores and more threads here in 2021 so we're gonna talk about that right after a word from today's video sponsor, and that would be The Coldest Water. Now, I have their 32 ounce uh, water bottle here. It comes with a built-in straw, has nice rubber grips on the bottom, so you can't have the bottle like flying out of your hand or anything like that. The Coldest Water runs rolling giveaways, which you can see the links in the description for more details on that. So if you're looking to try to pick up maybe a free water bottle, hey, that's a great place to do it, is just through a giveaway. But if you're looking to purchase one of these things, they have tons of different color options as well size options available. You can get 10% off with the code HH10 also in the description down below. So just see, see those links. There's a lot of great information down there and the water bottles themselves are absolutely fantastic. Now, as we get into this video, if you have yourself one of these quad core i5s, whether it's from the 7000 generation or previous generations, let me know in those comments down below how that's going for you. Are you ready to upgrade or are you still happy with it? And for that matter, while you're down there, go ahead and hit that sub button so you are subscribed and you don't miss any future content about some of this retro hardware. Not that the 7000 series or 6000 series is really all that retro, but you know what I mean. So I mentioned today we're looking at a Skylake i5. We're actually taking a look at the i5-6600K, though it is being run at stock frequencies. I'm not overclocking the CPU. In fact, the only thing that is not completely out of the box with the way the test bench is set up today is the RAM configuration does feature 32 gigabytes of DDR4 memory in a 2x16 gigabyte kit and is using the XMP profile, so it is running at its rated 3200 megahertz. And I'm going to test a few modern games on the i5 and I'm looking for a couple of different things with it being paired with an RTX 3060 which in an ideal world where the 3060 is actually available at MSRP that's sort of a mid-range-ish card here in 2021. So what I'm looking for is A, are we getting a smooth frame rate? Because with the 3060 at 1080p gaming, we should have no problem with all of these titles clearing 60 FPS, but I'm really more concerned about the 1% and 0.1% lows. That is, 
are the games that I'm running stuttering a lot or are they playing perfectly smoothly? And the other thing I'm keeping an eye on in the gameplay footage is the percentages of usage between the GPU and the CPU. Basically, is it being fed as much as it can handle by the CPU or are we seeing a situation where the GPU is taking some time off running at like 70 or 80% where the CPU may be loaded up at basically 100%. And if that's the case, then what we're really seeing there is while the gameplay may be smooth and perfectly playable, if we see the CPU app pinned 100% and the GPU isn't working right around 100%, then what we're really looking at is a bit of a CPU bottleneck, which may not be a big deal because if you're still getting a perfectly smooth experience, then it's not the end of the world if you're giving up some frames. But if we are seeing the CPU pinned at 100%, what we're looking at there is the CPU holding the system back just a little, at which point you may want to start looking for your upgrade path moving forward. Not that you really have to upgrade now because that's not a big deal. It's just that you're starting to see the CPU hit uh, sort of the end of the line as far as keeping a modern GPU fed. So we're looking at a few different things as we move into the gameplay. And with that, the three titles we are looking at today, we have a couple of uh, more demanding AAA single player style titles in Red Dead Redemption 2, as well as Cyberpunk 2077. And then I have a multiplayer title that I thought might be a little bit demanding for a CPU like this, and that would be Call of Duty Warzone. So with that, let's hop into those games and see just how well the 6600K is holding its own here in 2021. Now for Red Dead Redemption 2, we ran on medium settings, 1080p, this was the built-in benchmark. And the average frame rate here was 78, the 1% low at 50 and 0.1% low at 43. And one of the things I actually really like about Red Dead Redemption 2 is that it does seem to give pretty consistent frame times. That is, regardless of the hardware it's running, even if the frame rate is pretty low, it doesn't usually turn into a complete stuttery mess. And that is the case here. Once again, we see the CPU often near 100% and the GPU hovering there in the mid 70s, often close to 80%, but we're not seeing a mess of a frame rate. So if you were running a 6600K, you might not be uh, able to stream this game with a 6600K just because you're already pushed up against the CPU limiting your frame rate and any sort of background tasks going on in the background are gonna lower that frame rate. But if you're just wanting to play the game, this is a perfectly acceptable frame rate for Red Dead Redemption 2. Now, interestingly, I actually thought Cyberpunk 2077 would give this CPU fits. And what I actually saw in the footage is a pretty nice balance here between the CPU and GPU being very loaded up in this title. Sometimes you'll see the GPU sort of limiting things hitting near 100%. Other times you'll see the CPU at or very near 100%. But you're not seeing a huge bottleneck one way or the other, at least from the gameplay footage. So the frame timing consistency was just fine. This was a good experience as I played in this particular title. So I have no major complaints when it comes to the 6600K running Cyberpunk 2077. Now you are gonna wanna limit background tasks when it comes to the CPU because anything going on in the background is just further loading up that CPU that's already being pushed to its limit. But if you're just playing the game, hey, this is a great experience. Now in Call of Duty Warzone on low settings, 1080p, the average frame rate was 104, the 1% low was there at 71, and the 0.1% low was there at 56. And to be honest, it was a really solid experience. Now, one of the things I wanna point out, as I mentioned before, the CPU is basically pinned here at 100% or very near 100%, and the GPU is only running between 60 to 80% most of the time. It's a lot of the time hovering there around that 70 percent figure so the GPU is not the bottleneck with the frame rate in this particular title but the good news with Warzone is that although the CPU may be holding the GPU back just a little bit it's not giving us a stuttery mess so yes you could get better frame rates with a better CPU probably with more cores more threads in the works but the bright side is if you're running something like a 6600K and you're planning to run Warzone or you already are running Warzone, you should still get a really solid experience with 60 plus frames per second, no problem at 1080p. So as we move into the conclusion, I wanna focus on what the i5s from the quad core era still do really well, and that is just gaming. And when I say just gaming, I mean you should really just game with them. You shouldn't be looking to do a lot of streaming or a lot of other background tasks while you're gaming. If all you're doing is gaming with them, 
then yeah, they're still gonna give you a good experience when you pair them with a sensible GPU. I would not pair a 6600K or 7600K or other quad core i5s with really anything over about a 3060 right now because you're gonna start to run into some very serious CPU bottlenecks and you're just not gonna get your money's worth out of your GPU. Unless of course you're planning to upgrade in the near future on the CPU and platform side of things, then maybe you could go ahead and purchase that better GPU. But if you're just looking to game, and especially if you're working with a GPU from generations past, then this is probably still giving you a really solid experience and you really shouldn't feel pressured to upgrade just yet if you're happy with the system that you have. And that's really the takeaway here. If you're happy with the performance you're getting, even if there are better performing options out there, if you already have it, it's free. So don't feel pressured to upgrade if you're just chasing FPS. If you're happy with the gaming experience, the 6600K, 7600K, other i5s from that era are probably still giving you a really solid gaming experience. So of course, I like to kick it back to you guys. If you have a quad core i5, let me know. Are you still happy with gaming performance? Are you looking to upgrade? Let me know all of your circumstances in those comments down below. And of course, if you like the video, give it a like, share, subscribe, comment. All those things are very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.